Hi, this is Dr. Neha Agarwal, consultant ophthalmologist and teaching faculty at DBMCI. First of all, heartiest congratulations to all the toppers of NEED PG 2024. Today, I am going to share my insight on the successful career of ophthalmology and we will be discussing the clinical as well as teaching aspects in the ophthalmology as a subject. Now, why ophthalmology? Ophthalmology is a branch which is providing both the medical and surgical challenges with constant innovations in the field of ophthalmology. You can impact the patient's life immensely by improving the vision, giving vision, especially to the elderly patients. Therefore, you know, this is one branch which will give you a lot of job satisfaction. You are going to work with the cutting edge technology and impacts your patient life. Now, in order to succeed clinically, you have to work on the strong diagnostic skills. You have to remain updated with the latest techniques. For this, you can join your workshops, conferences, online forums, and the most important, the strong patient rapport too. Now, as far as teaching uh, career is concerned, as a teaching faculty, I would suggest that for that, you have to be very, very uh, good listener. You have to be patient. Not only you have to be a good mentor you have to be a good learner too while teaching your students every time you are learning something you have to be motivated yourself in order to motivate them you have to be great learner in order to teach them and the constant support that you are giving apart from the communication skills so whatever you know you should be able to pass on your knowledge it's not important that how much you know it's more important that how you express your knowledge so if you feel like that a strong mentor or a strong teacher is hidden in you then ophthalmology as a teaching branch is also very good regarding the pros and cons of ophthalmology guys i can see a number of pros it's my first love first of all it's highly highly rewarding so you are providing vision to your patient and you are going to impact your patient's quality of life also Number two, it's very, very innovative. We have regular advancements in techniques and procedures and you are giving what is the best according to the timeline for the patient. Uh, we can also have a balanced work life. So you can do a part-time practice too. You can do medical practice. You can do surgical practice. You can do full-time practice. So depending upon your priority and balancing your life, we can structure it like this. Another important thing is that it is also having the subspecialities and they are also giving you tailor-made career pathways. So though ophthalmology is a terminal branch in itself, but if you go for further super specialization, we have like um, super specialists in posterior segments, in the uh, lasers, uh, diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy, or in corneas, we have keratoplasties, uh, we have eye banking. So there are certain uh, super specialities and if you are a person who has more of the hunger for going into the research as well as other subspecialities, then also you are you can opt for ophthalmology. Uh, another important thing is job satisfaction. See, whenever we are working professionally, we require job satisfaction. So, ophthalmology is one branch which is giving you job satisfaction as a medical branch, as a surgical branch, a branch which is giving you research, a job opportunities, maintaining a healthy balance between your work life, between your personal life. You have time for yourself and your spouse. And I feel that because here, you have sufficient amount of time that you can utilize according to your wish you are happy and satisfied as far as job satisfaction as well as monetary gains are concerned and a very important thing is that you can keep your spouse happy only once you are happy so here is a branch which makes you happy both financially as well as uh, physically so that's why you can be a good spouse and you can provide a good life for your family as well as your children. 
Now talking about the cons in ophthalmology, like uh, see, uh, like at the any other branch, we have the saturation in this branch only. But that is not only for ophthalmology. With we have the saturation in every branch. If you are the best, then you can strive for excellence, and you are required everywhere. But if you are not excellent, then obviously saturations are there. Especially if I am talking about the job opportunities, you can always do a private practice, but you have to see that if you have to do a private practice, it's always better that you go in the B grade cities because in, you know in the metros we have so many chains of the hospitals which are going on. So at those places where we have multiple chains going on, it's slightly struggling to establish your own practice because you have you know costly equipment set up. So on your own, you may require some time or you may not be able to establish a setup which is equivalent to the setups which are made by these things. But if you are ready for your job opportunities in the starting or if you are ready to go in a step ladder pattern and you are not in a hurry, then you, you can do everything. Then, you know, whenever we have surgical branches, guys, there is always a risk of complication. There is no surgery without complication. So if you are a person who gets panicky very soon or you are impulsive, you are not ready to handle the complications, then again, they can be a problem. Sometimes even after trying your best, you are not able to save the vision or give the vision to the patient. So that time again, there is a struggle uh, with the patient, controlling them, reassuring them, counseling them. That can be again a problem. But again, I would say that taking into consideration that we have certain problems with the ophthalmology um, we have to remain uh, updated every time the conferences the workshops latest techniques because every five years cat all of the cataract changes uh, the surgeries that we are doing the machines that we are using the instrumentation so obviously you cannot be you know happy and satisfied just doing ms once like any other surgical branch you will have to keep yourself updated but otherwise in all it's a very good branch which is giving you opportunities to make your life as you want you can go either way you want now if i talk about the fellowship so there is a lot of query that is it compulsory to do fellowships after ophthalmology no guys it's not compulsory it's good if you do it and especially if you are able to do it from a good place then it will add on to your degree, it will add on to your clinical skills as well as academic knowledge. But it does not mean that if you do not want to do the fellowships, you cannot do ophthalmology. It's not like this. There are certain institutes where fellowships are very, very good, especially, uh, you know, ophthalmology little, is a little better towards the south. If you go to the Shankar Netrale, LV Prasad. So sometimes, you know, the, the DNBs at these places is even better than the MS in the very, very reputed uh, and the government colleges now what should i do if i am getting ms dnb diploma fellowship so always remember that if i have to give them uh, the order the first is always the ms so uh, if you have a choice first thing is always the ms second is the dnb and third is the diploma now there is a very little difference between the ms and dnb on the theoretical grounds but but still i would say that if you have a choice then it is slightly better to go for the MS though now the difference between MS and DNB is very very less the reason is that the passing percentage though it's again not that struggling to pass in DNB as it used to be because uh, now you have better chances you have better academics but still because DNB examinations are not conducted at the parent hospitals and uh, the you know examining body and the faculties are you know entirely new so you do not have that familiar environment you are not having any 
of the frequency with your examiner so it is always struggling to pass up in dnbs and also the type of environment that you have in the hospitals is not that of academic types now ms and mds are done in the colleges medical colleges will always have better academics if you compare it with the hospitals while dnbs are offered at the hospitals where uh, you know every time the professors and the consultants are busy treating the patients so obviously there will be a difference but again it depends if you are doing the dnbs from lv prasad or shankar netrale it could be even better than the ms right so to conclude i can say that you can establish your career in ophthalmology both clinically as well as um, as a teaching faculty but in both the cases you have to be very very passionate you should be having a urge to remain updated and adapt yourself with the constant changing techniques and instrumentation at the same time you should be very precise in surgery see there is always a learning graph so uh, like any other surgical branch this also has a learning graph and it will take some time to you know grasp the micro surgeries but because it's a micro surgery sometimes you may have problem if you have tremors so i would strongly suggest that if you have tremors especially you know those fine tremors then it's slightly better to avoid ophtha because it's a micro surgery and uh, if you do not have tremors but your parents have those tremors then also it's better to avoid ophthalmology because most of the times these familial tremors or the essential tremors comes at the age of 30 35 when you have already chosen your branch now you cannot go back and change your branch plus the color defects now there were so many queries about the color blindness yes guys there are certain colleges which are restricting you to take the surgical branches especially the ophthalmology in cases of color vision defects so for that matter if you have blue color vision defects especially the total blue color vision defects then you should avoid ophthalmology but apart from this you have uh, keratoconus astigmatism or you have uh, refractive errors or you have um, thin cornea then these are not the contraindications for ophthalmology you all are welcome to the department of ophthal so after completing your ms in ophthalmology yes you can go for the fellowships if you want like we have fellowships in cornea refractive surgeries we have pediatric surgeries neuro ophthalmologies even after dnbs uh you can go for these fellowships after diploma you have to first do the dnp and then you can do the fellowships yes you can uh, equate your degree after diploma if you complete your dnbs and uh, these dnbs will you know the uh, will fill that vacuum that you have a kind of after doing the diplomas because we do not have the thesis in the diplomas but i would say that uh, in ophthalmology the passion for the patient's care and uh, constant interest in getting updates attending the workshops conferences and learning both medically as well as surgically is utmost important but if you are passionate about it you will enjoy doing these things giving vision to the patient impacting the patient's life and that would turn out to be the best career for you i would um, uh congratulate all of you once again and uh, wish all the very best may god bless you and help you in taking the right decision and if you have any further doubts regarding the ophthalmology feel free to contact me you can message me i'm just a message away and by the way all those who have planned to take ophthalmology welcome to the department all the best guys happy ophthalmology